Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's a privilege to be here and speaking to so much smart brains. Um, my, my background is in uh, machine learning, and uh, I've been working with computer vision for the last 12 years, and in the last six, applying that in healthcare through Portal. We are an online diagnostic platform that connects remote areas and underserved areas in Brazil and Africa to medical specialists, usually in Sao Paulo. To show how it works, I'm going to start with a video that we recorded last year uh, with a partner, Google Cloud. Uh, this was before, uh, like, we decided to do this talk before the partnership between Mayo and Google Cloud was announced, so it's a, <laughs> a nice coincidence that I'm going to show a, a success case here. Uh, that video we decided to film in one of our most remote clients. This is a clinic in the heart of the Brazilian rainforest. So we go with a plane uh, to Manaus, which is the capital of the Amazon state. Then you go 24 hours in a boat to get to the city, where they have 200 indigenous villages. And it's very hard to find a cardiology and a radiologist in this region. And you have a client over there, a doctor, which we we'll call him a hero doctor, that put the equipment in his backpack and go in a boat to visit the, this indigenous village and help those people. Eu nunca me imaginava casando com um médico. Recebíamos pessoas em casa e adoeciam. E o meu marido dizia, não, não custa nada, não precisa pagar nada. Pensando nas pessoas carentes, nós tivemos a ideia, então, de abrir uma clínica. O Amazonas, a gente costuma dizer aqui que é um outro país dentro do Brasil. Eu estou aqui praticamente no isolamento geográfico, onde na minha cidade eu só saio de avião ou de barco. Nós temos mais de 200 vilas que ficam distantes. Há poucos especialistas que querem vir morar no Amazonas. A gente fez parceria com a telemedicina. Portal is a telediagnostic platform, so we connect remote areas like the Brazilian rainforest to specialist doctors in Sao Paulo. We receive AKGs, EGs, and X-rays, and then do the diagnostics online and give this back to these remote areas in a conventional way. Usually, it takes 60 days to get a result back, and at hundreds of dollars in cost. And we do this in the same day, in a few minutes, with 10x less cost. So for us, the cloud was the only way. It needs to be easy to use. A nurse in the middle of the rainforest is not an IT technician. The nurse only have to do the exam. It will automatically appear in the cloud and to the doctor. So Google Cloud is enabling us to really grow and operate this large-scale telemedicine company. We have our first client in Africa now, in Angola, which is sending AKGs to Brazil, and our cardiologists are giving the results back there. So we can launch in Europe, US, Africa, and the whole globe, I hope. <laughs> the end goal is that anyone in the world can have access to quality healthcare through Google Cloud. And I believe that this will change healthcare forever. I fui ajudada muito na minha vida. Então você tem que pensar no próximo. Pensar no ser humano. Cada dia mais eu eu me sinto bem feliz de trazer, né? essa tecnologia e realmente montar a clínica. Né? Então, assim, começou realmente a abrir as portas para um outro mundo. So this is the client, and as you can see, it's right in the middle of the forest. And for us, it was very symbolic because we had a chance to visit them and, uh, and film this with them. Also, uh, we like to, to joke that we got 10 gringos going with us, so the Google team went with us to film that, and uh, they met the family. So Paulo is one of the patients. Uh, he was suffering from a severe heart condition that was about to lead to his death, and nobody in the, huge, the region could help him. So the way that works, this doctor visit him, put the electrodes to do an electrocardiogram and a Holter exam. Our technology integrates with the medical devices, transfer the information to the cloud, and our team of cardiologists thousands of kilometers away makes the diagnostic online. And in that case, with these diagnostics, they were able to intervene and save Paulo's life, which really shows us that it's way more than technology and it's the social impact that we can bring with this kind of platform. 
We enabled this by a proprietary technology that integrates directly with medical devices. And this was the first challenge. Uh, we started that you know, around 2013, and we felt that the bottleneck was the lack of interoperability between medical devices, EHRs, and the, the problem that probably you guys are uh, used to. And especially emerging markets, these are usually 10 to 15 year old devices. So no Daikon or like HL7 and these most, most modern protocols. So it's really hard to operate when you have several manual steps. So back then in 2013, the hype was the moment was IoT, remember like Internet of Things. So we raised several research and development grants with the Minister of Science and Research Foundations and corporate partners like Google to develop drivers that directly connect with the medical devices. So today we have 2,000 types types of integrations and we cover all kinds of brands and about 90% of all diagnostic devices in the way that the nurse only have to do the exam or their general physician, the information will be encrypted and transferred to the cloud and we show this to the doctor in a secure HIPAA compliant web platform. So it became very easy to use it, with that we grew quite fast and we reached more than 280 cities in Brazil and Africa. And we do about 10,000 daily diagnostics, more than any hospital in the world, to across 500 cl uh, clinics and hospitals in these uh, two countries. Three examples of verticals. First, Unimed is the largest health insurer in Brazil. It's similar to Blue Shield. And they do have several hospitals that work with our platform. So we both do diagnostics to them but also they can see each other health centers and hospitals and do diagnostics between them. And this also opens a new revenue stream to these hospitals because they can use the platform to then do diagnostics to Africa in the small, uh, most underserved areas. Uh, we also have corporate healthcare. So these are companies like BRF, Natura, Petrobras, that have thousands of employees. So in the case of uh, BRF, Brazil Foods, they have 100,000 employees. And instead of sending all these uh, collaborators to do exams uh, outside, they just put an internal infirmary on their factory that access all these specialists. So we work to keep people healthy. So a lot of preventive medicine, occupational health care, and we are in 24 factories with them. We have a lot of oil rigs with Petrobras as well that are sending these exams through the platform. And in that cases, uh, we also work, for example, with mining companies, and we have algorithms that detect when the uh, employees are losing lung function because of the dust of the mining operations, and we just give them an alert so they can remove these collaborators of this dangerous position before it's irreversible, which also saved them from a lawsuit. So the, the ones that look for us in BRF, for example, was the CFO of the company, not the healthcare part. And the second bottleneck, so first we integrated with medical devices, but then our doctors or specialists started to say to us that it's very shallow to do a diagnostics, especially a telediagnostics, when you're looking at just one imaging. So it's just a, like a chest x-ray and you need to do a diagnostic on that. So they start to ask us, could we correlate this with the lab tests or with the EHR data? And then we use the same skeleton, the same APIs that we develop uh, to integrate with the medical devices. We apply then to EHR. So we started with AppKit Cerner and then we go like one by one, X Clinics and all the big brands integrating them then. Then we work with HL7 and Fire, which is like standard protocols. And then we start to go with the lab tests and loinks and one by one. Today we cover uh, most of the market uh, vendors in these softwares and we can find the patients in different systems because in one device will be for example Maria Fernandez but then she married and changed the last name and the HR is a different name and then the mandatory field is a driver license in one and a social security in the other so we develop a master patient index that looks throughout more than 50 different fields and then find the same patient in different databases and create a timeline. So now the doctors that are doing these online diagnostics, they can correlate the exams with lab tests, genomics, EHRs, and really have a holistic view of the patient. We actually developed that to enhance our operation and give him better diagnostics, but then we solve another problem, which was not our core business, but it's the lack of interoperability in big systems. So last year, we won a bid with the Sao Paulo government to integrate the medical devices and databases for 35 million citizens in the public health care of Brazil. 
This is one of the largest healthcare data sets in the world right now. And we could combine the three worlds. So we have the public healthcare part, then the people that have insurance, and the people that have the work healthcare in the corporate healthcare. And we find the patient in the different systems and create a really robust timeline of all the patient data. And this enable a very good uh, online diagnostics. And the way that we do this in such a large scale is by applying machine learning in several steps in the workflow. So this is the doctor's screen. On the left, you have an exam. And that example is an EKG, but it can be anything from 20 different modalities, and it's coming directly from the medical device. On the right, since we have 30 million patients in the database, we know which text the doctors use most per disease. So we create decision trees and they don't have to type anymore. So a cardiology will look at this exam and will click arrhythmia, next. Infarcto, myocardial, next. Normal, next. Even in more complex exams like a brain scan, neurology will look at that and will click abnormal, epilepsy, diffuse, frontal lobe, diagnose, next, diagnose. And this is speed up about 10 times how many diagnostics the doctors do per hour which allow us to really drop the price point in the other side. So we are able to do brain scans for $5. So just compare with the American prices. And uh, we can really like, make this in a large scale, but with low price. Second benefit, we're now not linking imaging with free text anymore. It's what we like to, to make a joke that is the poetical freedom of the doctors, but if you give given a problem, 10 doctors will write in the different way the same thing. Uh, so the way that we did, we give the freedom, so in the front screen, the, the user experience from the doctor, he's reading what he wants, but in the back end, we, these are tied to decision trees, which are then linked to YCD codes in this nomad. So now we are linking images to really strong labels by these doctors, and I have like millions of those pairs. And when you have that, you are able to train computer vision models. So this is when we joined forces with Google about two years ago and raised about $10 million in R&D grants to develop that. And today we have 100 different computer vision models that automatically detect diseases and medical findings above 95% accuracy. That means that we have one for cardiomegaly, one for nodules, uh, one for like uh, arrhythmia, tachycardia, so there are, these are very specific models, and we have 100 of those, and most of these models are in the state-of-the-art metrics right now. And this is important because we train those algorithms with very diverse data sources from 500 hospitals, so they generalize very well to new data sets because these models learn from different tiers of devices, different technicians performing the exam, so they are very robust. The way that we use that, we receive an exam, can be any modality. It will go through this neural network that has been trained in millions of examples that detect the disease, in that case, an atrial arrhythmia, and this will put a risk score in the exam, move it up in the acute emergencies. So we guarantee that any emergency will hit the doctor in up to 30 seconds. And this is how we take care of time-sensitive diseases like stroke, for example. Then, after this triage, the doctor will do the final diagnostic, not the robots, this is important. And this will retrain the AI again daily with thousands of new examples. Also, now that we went above the 90% uh, accuracy in precision uh, metrics, we trust the algorithms enough to also do double check. So imagine if the algorithm uh, made a prediction of arrhythmia, but the doctor clicks normal, they disagree. The system sent to three other doctors and create a board of consensus, thus eliminating human errors. So this helped a lot in the adoption part for the doctors, because now they feel safe. They know that this is a prioritization and a double check, and not an AI to replace them, but to empower them. Same thing with the nurses. Now the nurses there are in these 500 hospitals and clinics in rural areas, they are being empowered, because through this technology, they become the local hub in the region. They now can do several different modalities and brain scans in the middle of the rainforest, and this empower both them and the owner of these small clinics, which usually become the hub in the region and receive a lot of new patients. And through that, we started to grow with different data science projects. So we started to create clustering tools on top of this 30 million patient data lake. So you can see oncology patients, which kind of uh, chemotherapy is giving best outcomes, and all kinds of different analysis. Uh, we create these automatic alerts to the public health care of Sao Paulo. So instead of trying to look at the 30 million people, so now they have this small like, red dots over there to look at the more severe cases daily. 
And we also create a lot of dashboards so they know which kind of drugs people are receiving, the treatments, best outcomes and costs. So this is being used uh, to manage the public health care in the state of Sao Paulo. Uh, this was made with the ecosystem of partners, so a lot of manufacturers, research foundations, uh, corporates uh, like Google. We've been through Google Launchpad Accelerator, so about 10 times in Silicon Valley with our team to improve this technology. And something that uh, I'm now announcing here, like one week ago, uh, we've been selected by United Nations and one of the top global companies to accelerate the 2030 development goals. So I'm going to Geneva next week, uh, being an intensive training over there. And United Nations and World Health Organization is helping us to expand this to Africa and in other emerging markets. Of course, this is possible with a, a dream team. So uh, just a few names, like Renata, my co-founder, she's a lawyer specialized in healthcare regulation. Roberto builds hospital infrastructure for United Health. Uh, we have several PhDs, and for example, Michael, that won an award as best data science in Latin America last year. And now it's a nice timing uh, to be here. Uh, we just raised a Series B with a New York investor to expand to US and Europe. And through United Nations, we are working more and more with Africa. So right now we are looking for partners to help us in this mission. So we invite you to join us in our mission to provide universal access to quality healthcare. Thank you. Raphael.